Hello guys, welcome to Statics of Rigid Bodies. So, we're gonna start the lecture with the general principles. Now, what is mechanics? Mechanics is a branch of the physical sciences that is concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies that are subjected to the action of forces. Now, there are three branches of mechanics. Number one is rigid body mechanics. Number two, deformable body mechanics. And number three is fluid mechanics. Dun sa tatlong yan, statics is under rigid body mechanics. So, if you will see dito sa baba, there are two areas of rigid body mechanics. Number one is statics. So, it deals with the equilibrium of bodies. That is, those that are either at rest or move with a constant velocity. And then, number two is dynamics. It is concerned with the accelerated motion of bodies. So, dito sa statics, wala pa tayong acceleration. It's either the body is at rest or moving with constant velocity. So, next na yung may acceleration, which is dynamics. Some fundamental concepts and basic quantities that we will encounter ay length time, mass, and force. I think we are all familiar with these terms. Right? So, as CE students, we will encounter force a lot. Lalo na sa inyong mga um, future subjects. So, force is considered as a push or pull exerted by one body to uh, on another. Okay, so, ayan. Some idealizations so, a particle has a mass but a size that can be neglected. For example, the size of the Earth is insignificant compared to the size of its orbit. So, kahit gano'n pa kalaki yung Earth, kung ang um, inaaral is yung orbit ni Earth, Earth is just a tiny particle. So, Earth can be considered as a particle kahit gano'n siya kalaki. Kasi, ang kinoconsider natin is yung vast orbit niya. Okay? So, there. Um, when a body is idealized as a particle, the principles of mechanics reduce to a rather simplified form since the geometry of the body will not be involved in the analysis of the problem. Okay? A rigid body can be considered as a combination of a large number of particles in which all the particles remain at a fixed distance from one another, both before and after applying a load. So, rigid body meaning uh, hindi nagde-deform. So, halimbawa, meron kang uh, you have a cube. So, let's say you have this cube, no? Tapos, nag-apply ka ng large amount of force dito sa taas. Okay. So, kahit uh, dito sa rigid body, pag sinabi mong rigid body yung cube, kahit gano pa kalaki, kahit gano kabigat yung force na ipapatong mo dyan, hindi siya magde-deform. So, yung length, uh, width, and height niya would, would still remain the same, no? So, ayun, walang deformation na mangyayari. Um, though sa, sa future courses or sa future subjects, we will uh, talk about deformation. Pero for now, rigid body muna tayo. Okay. Um, this model is important because the body shape does not change when a load is applied. And so, we do not have to consider the type of material from which the body is made. Ayan. So, kung halimbawa, uh, ito is, let's say, gold, di ba? Ang gold, madali siyang ma-deform. 
kung sasabihin natin na rigid body si Gold, kahit gano'n ka bigat yung papatong mo doon, hindi siya magde-deform. Kahit steel yung material, hindi rin siya magde-deform. No? Kasi ang assumption natin, rigid body. Okay? So, the, the material does not matter. The type of material. Okay? Um, in most cases, the actual deformations occurring in structures, machines, mechanisms, and the like are relatively small. And the rigid body assumption is suitable for analysis. So, kung ang, ang length ng isang rod, let's say, is 5 meters, and ang deformation is 0 0.0001 millimeter, o, oh, diba, super lit, uh, we can, we can, uh, assume na parang hindi siya nag-change, parang hindi naman ganun ka grabe, no, parang, parang ganun, hindi siya ganun ka important. A concentrated force represents the effect of a loading, which is assumed to act at a point on a body. So we can represent a load by a concentrated force, provided the area over which the load is applied is very small, compared to the overso overall size of the body. So example, daw jan ay, let's say, a wheel. Tapos, yung wheel natin is, ayan, nasa ground. Ang assumption, guys, pag sinabing concentrated force, yung buong bigat ng wheel is nag act lang sa isang point. No? Diyan lang sa point na yan. Okay? Kasi, um, we can say na, though, hindi naman talaga sa totoong buhay, di ba? Hindi naman talaga nakatangent yung wheel sa, sa pavement, no? Or sa, sa kalsada. Pero, yung area na nagtatouch dun sa kalsada is relatively small as compared to the overall uh, area of the wheel. No? So, with that, pwede natin i-assume na concentrated force yung in-exert ng wheel sa ground. Okay? Next, we have Newton's three laws of motion. We are all familiar with this. The first law states that a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with constant velocity tends to remain in this state provided the particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. So, kung may object na nakatigil, mananatili siyang nakatigil kung hindi mo siya gagalawin. I mean, kung hindi ka mag apply ng force sa kanya. And a body moving at with a constant velocity will remain to do so not unless um, i-push mo siya i-push mo siya para magkaroon siya ng acceleration or harangan mo yung ano niya yung movement niya para mag-stop. No? So, kung, kung walang outside force na haharang or mag dadagdag ng ano ng acceleration doon same pa rin yung magiging pagtakbo ng particle na yun. second law, a particle acted upon by an unbalanced force F experiences an acceleration A that has the same direction as the force and a magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. So we're all familiar with it, with this equation, F equals MA. And the third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay? Next, we have Newton's law of gravitational attraction. We have the formula F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Where in F is the force of gravitation between the two particles. G is the universal constant of gravitation with a value of 66.73 times 10 raised to negative 12 cubic meter per kilogram meter per kilogram second squared. And M1, M2 are the two masses of the particles being uh, considered. And R is the distance between the two particles. Now, if we have a particle at the surface of the earth, 
So, yung particle na yon, let's say si M1, and then si Earth, siya si M2. This equation here can be simplified, and it can become W equals mg. So, ito yung force of, uh, ito yung um, force of gravitation between those two particles, the Earth and the the, the object dun sa surface, no? So, we have the weight, right? Which is equal to mg. Some units of measurement. So, we have two. We are familiar with this. So, International System of Units, or SI, wherein the length is expressed in meters, time is in seconds, and mass is in kilograms. Pag sinolt natin yung force, we will get kilogram meter per second squared, or that is equal to newtons. Next, we have U.S. customary uh, FPS, or English units. Uh, ang length ay expressed in foot or inches, time is still in seconds, the mass is expressed in slugs, wherein one slug is equal to one pound second squared per foot. Okay, and then your force is expressed in pounds. Okay, so I indicated here the uh, constant G for SI units and for US customary units. Okay, we're in G is 9.81 meter per second squared for SI and 32.2 feet per second squared for English units. Next, we have prefixes that we will often use. Okay, so we have kilo, mega, and giga. Also, we have submultiples such as milli, micro, and nano. So, alam naman natin yan, ano? And we use these symbols as prefixes. Okay? Next, we have force vectors. Force vectors. So, um, scalars and vectors. We are familiar with what scalar scalars and vectors are. So, a scalar may magnitude pero walang direction. Ang vector, parehong may magnitude at may direction. Okay? So, dito sa printout, yung vector natin is represented by a bold letter. Pero, kapag magsusolve tayo, to simplify, we write an arrow above the the, the letter of the vector. No? Next, we have some vector operations. Multiplication and division of a vector by a scalar. Let's consider vector a with this magnitude. If you will multiply a scalar 2, so, yung magnitude ni A magda-double, yung direction niya, same pa rin. If you will multiply in scalar na negative 1 kay A, the magnitude would still be the same, but the direction would be changed. No? And in the same manner, if you divide A with negative 1 half, uh, I mean, if you multiply negative 1 half kay A, um, how do you go? Uh, a will will be the magnitude of A will be reduced. Okay, magiging kalahati na lang siya, and the direction will also change. Okay, so that's how multiplication and division of uh, scalar scalar and vector quantities work. Vector addition. So for vector addition, we have a parallelogram law and the triangle rule. So how does it work? For parallelogram law, if we have vector A and vector B, and we want and we want to get the resultant, so pag din natin si A and B, what we we should do is um dun sa yung tail ng dalawang vectors, iko connect natin sila. Okay. Now from there, gagawa tayo ng parallel line dun sa 
vector from the head of the other vector. So, ganun din dun sa kabila. Yung intersection na yun, let's say point P, okay, we'll note that down. And if we are to connect the tail, tails of the two vectors at yung intersection, that is the resultant. I mean that, yeah, the resultant or the sum of the two vectors. Okay, so this is how it is done using parallelogram law. Next, we have triangle rule. Paano naman yan? Sabi dito, head to tail fashion. So, same. Let's consider vectors A and B. So, kapag head to tail, let's have Let's have uh, vector A muna, no? So, you draw vector A. Tapos, from the head of vector A, uh, that's where you will draw the tail of vector B. Okay. So, yan, nag-draw mo na rin si vector B, no? So, dito naman, ang i-connect mo is yung start at saka yung end. And, yung mapoproduce mo, yan na yung resultant vector. Okay. Sabi dito, yung... Uh, pag-add ng vector is commutative. So, ibig sabihin, A plus B is equal to B plus A. No? So, same lang. Next, we have vector subtraction. The resultant of the difference between two vectors A and B of the same type may be expressed as A plus negative of B. Okay, if this is A and this is B, if you will subtract B from A, Babalik ta rin mo lang daw yung direction ni B. Tapos, saka ka mag-apply ng parallelogram law or triangle rule. No? So, same. You'll, you'll get the resultant. Next, we have vector addition of forces. For example, you have this pin. And, dun sa pin may dalawang forces, F1 and F2. If we want to find the resultant force FR, Pwede natin gamitin yung parallelogram law or yung triangle rule. Huh? Ngayon, paano naman kung ang given ay resultant force? Tapos, i-break down mo into components along axis U and axis V. So, from, 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 from this, from the tail of uh, I mean, from the head of your resultant force, you draw a line parallel to one of the axes, to the two axes pala. No? So, yan. Parallel kay V, parallel kay U. So, yung part na to, ito na yung component along uh, axis V, so F sub V, and ito naman, so yung component ni axis U, okay, F sub U. So, ayan. Next, we have addition of several forces. For example, you have three forces, F1, F2, and F3. You want to find the resultant force. Sabi dyan, i-add mo daw muna yung dalawa. So, in-add muna si F1, si F2. Ito na. Ito yung resultant ng F1 plus F2, di ba? So, from here, i-add mo si F3. So, using parallelogram law, ayun, nakuha si FR. Okay, so, ganun lang siya. Next, we have cosine law and sine law. Uh, this is just a review sa inyong uh, trigo, trigonometry. So, ayan. You have a triangle that has three sides and three angles. So, using cosine law, sabi, you can find the magnitude of the third side if you are given the two sides and the angle opposite the unknown side. Kay sine law naman, um, yung side over sine ng angle opposite that side ay equal sa ganun din no? dalawa pang side dalawa pang sides okay? so that's how uh, cosine and sine law uh, works so let's solve problem 1 ang given dyan, the screw i well, let's read the problem. The screw I is subjected to two forces, F1 and F2. 
determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So, ito na si screw I and subject daw siya sa dalawang um, tawag dito, forces. So, una, let's uh, write the given. So, given sa atin ay two forces. So, let's just draw a line. to represent those forces um, lang arrow. Ano na lang? Uh, ito na lang. Uh, so, yun na yung direction. So, we have two forces, 150 and 100 uh, newtons uh, directed at these uh, angles from the horizontal and vertical. Ngayon, ano daw yung magnitude and direction of the resultant force? So, let's also write the required Hala, ang liit na. Okay. So, ang required is FR. And, so, yun na nga, FR. With magnitude and direction. So, how are we going to solve? So, solution. Una, um, diba, to, to get the resultant, pwede kang mag-parallelogram law or mag-triangle rule ka. So, let's try doing the parallelogram law. So, copy ko na lang to. So, Gawa tayo ng line parallel doon. And parallel dito. Okay, so the intersection, yun na yung magiging resultant natin. O siya, di ba? Yan. Siya si FR. So, let's write FR. Okay. Um, ngayon, Anong given? 15 at saka 10, no? Pwede, we have two options, di ba? To use cosine, we have cosine law at saka sine law. So, meron ka bang pwedeng gamitin dun sa dalawa? Meron ka bang pwedeng paggamitan dyan ng sine law, cosine law? Wala pa, kasi given ka nga ng dalawang uh, magnitude, pero wala kang angle, so we have to identify yung angles dito. Okay. So, if this is 15 and this is 10, di ba, ito ay right angle, you'd be left with, ano? Ano tong angle na to? This is, ano yan? Yan ay, um, okay. So, 90 minus 10 minus 15 you'd be left with 65 degrees, di ba? So, yan. 65 degrees, yan. Ngayon, um, if this is 65, di ba, from geometry, if you have a parallelogram, kung ano yung angle dito, yun din yung angle dito sa opposite niya, di ba? Tapos, kung ano yung angle dito, yun din yung angle sa kabila. So, kung ito ay 65, ibig sabihin, ay, itong angle dito, 
65 din, no? Same value, 65. Yan. Now, if both of these are 65, ano yung angle dito? Um, ano tong angle na to, di ba? Hindi pala masyadong kita si Green. Wala lang. Sige, siya kita. Uh, kapalan na lang kasi natin. So, ano tong angle na to? So, yan naman ay yeah. So, ang, ang total ng interior angles ng uh, parallelogram is, di ba, 360 yun. So, we just have to uh, subtract and dalawang 65. 65 minus another 65 minus another 65 and then we divide that sa dalawa. Diba? Kasi ito, ito at saka ito yun eh. So, ano magiging sagot natin dyan? That would be 360 minus 130 is 130 divided by 2, that is 115 degrees. Okay? Ngayon, let's try um, what do you call this? Uh, let's rewrite, no? The triangle that we have. So, sige. Um, this is, yan, tapos, pag ganun, si yung resultant natin. Ayan. So, guys, ano yung magnitude nito? This is 100 newtons, di ba? So, 100 newtons. And this one here is 150 newtons. And ito naman ay FR. Yung ating resultant. Now, um, dito? Yung angle dito is 115. Ano pa? Oh, ito, wala tayong idea kung ano yan, di ba? Pero, given this information, pwede na natin gamitin yung cosine law. Right? So, applying cosine law, we can solve for FR. FR is equal to yung square root ng um, two sides, so 100 squared plus 150 squared min ay, minus Minus, ano nga yun? Minus 2 times 100 times 150 times cosine nung angle, which is 115. Okay? So, ayan. So, guys, um, solving this would... Ano nga yung sabat? Okay, solve ko lang. Um, 100 squared plus 150 squared so you should be able to get 212.552 uh, 4591 diba uh, anong unit nito this is in newtons now that we have FR um, now that we have FR are, are we done Nasagot na ba natin to yung required? Hindi, kasi sabi, magnitude and direction. So, kulang yung direction. If we are to... Ngayon, ang, ang gusto natin is... Ano? Just this. Ang gusto natin is to identify this angle. Okay. Paano yan? We have to find this angle first. Let's say this is uh, theta. And let's say that it is theta and this big angle here is uh, let's say beta okay now beta is equal to theta plus oh what's that 15 degrees diba okay now in order to solve for theta we can use 
uh, sine law. Pwede tayo mag sine law. So, paano? 150 over sine sine theta theta equals ano yung known sa atin? FR, di ba? May value na tayo for FR. FR over sine ng 115. So, pag nag-solve ka nyan, ang makukuha mong value for theta is oh, gamitin mo tong value ng FR na to, di ba? So, 212 divided by sine 115 Okay, so next 150 over answer arc sine so you will get theta na 39.7611272 degrees no? oh guys uh, sa paper nyo yung degree sign na lang diba? ngayon um, in order to solve for beta so beta is just theta plus 15. So, we have beta to be equal to 39 plus 15 54.761 degrees. So, ang final answer natin is FR equals 212.552 newtons tapos acting acting at an angle of 54.761 degrees from the horizontal. So, this is our final answer. Okay? So, ganun guys. When you are, you, when you are solving, no, I want you to write the complete given required and then the complete solution. Tapos, um, you you don't round off uh, intermediate values such as this one. Tapos, yung final answer, you express it in three decimal places. No? Tapos, ayan. Uh, let's use this notation. No? We can refer sa horizontal. Ganto na lang. Let's always refer sa horizontal. No? Para isa na lang. Huwag na tayong mag northeast, northwest, ganon. Alright, ganto na lang. Okay, so this is number one. Next, we have number two. Resolve the horizontal 600 pound force in two components acting along uh, the U and V axis and determine the magnitudes of these components. So, una, we write the given. Again, we write the given. So, Okay, you have 600 pound force. So, ganito. Payatan natin ang point. Okay. 600 pounds. And then, we have two axes. Uh, U and V. This is you, and this is me. Sure, this is V. Okay, so I don't know next. I don't need this. Okay, how do I remove? Uh, this one. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway, so sige na lang. Um, what do I do? Oh, yung angle, yung angle. This is 30, and this is also 30. 
Uh, yeah. Hirap naman magsaw sa ganito. Alright. So, given this, tapos may required pala tayo na required. Ala, ang liit na. Anyway. Hindi na siya pare-pareho. Um, what? So, ang required sa atin is to Yeah, we're gonna write the required. Ang required is component. So, yung force along U and yung force along V. Okay, so, yung two components. For the solution, what are we gonna do? Uh, okay. So, ngayon, um, ay, bakit na wala si V? We have fear V. Paano yan, guys? Kung meron kang resultant and you want to break it down into its components, mag paparallelogram tayo ulit or magta-triangle. No? I I'm saying na mag, ano tayo, mag-triangle. So, I'll just copy this. Ay. So, I'll just copy this part of Ayan. Tapos, I will <laughs> Green na lang. <laughs> Ayan. Ah, uh, okay. I'll make a line that is parallel to axis U. No? This one. And now I have a triangle. Diba? Okay. So, if this is the resultant force, this is a line parallel to angle U. And this is a line that coincides and... Uh, axis V, so parallel din siya kay V. Ano na yan ngayon? Ibig sabihin, ito na yung component along U axis, and this is the component along V axis. Tama? So, pwede na natin isulat yan na F U, and this one is F V. Alright? O, oh, ngayon, pwede na ba tayong gumamit ng cosine, sine law? Pwede. Hindi. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng makapag-sign law dyan, no? Mag-cosign law. Ang dami pang wala. So, ibig sabihin, maghahanap tayo ngayon ng angles. Alright? Now, what if we, what if we make a line here? Uh, what if we, we make a parallelogram? Hindi nga. Okay. Now that we have a parallelogram, Diba, from, from, from high school, from geometry, if you divide, if you make a diagonal from one corner ng parallelogram papunta dun sa opposite corner, yung angle dito, o, oh, equal sa angle dito. Tama? And yung angle dito ay equal sa angle dito sa kabila. Now, if that's the case, if this is 30, this is also 30. And this one is also 30, kasi 30 yun. So, sulat na natin. Um, green na nga yung kulit. So, this is 30. Hala, napakaganda. 30. 30 na lang, guys. Hindi ko na nilagay ng degrees. Now, if this is 30, another 30. Ano yung natira? Ah, uh, ito. Yan ay oh, 180 minus 60. Yan ay 120. 120 degrees. Alright? Ngayon, pwede na ba tayong mag sign law, cosine law? Pwede na. ba? Pwede na. Pero anong mas magandang gamitin? yung sign law. Mag-sign law tayo. Alright. So, let's write the equation. So, ang known natin ay 600. So, let's have 600 
divided by sine ano ba yung opposite sa 600 ang gulo na, sige ano muna, i-draw ko muna ng separate yung triangle um ganyan, tapos okay. hindi na siya masyadong makatotohanan guys, ano Okay. So, kunwari na lang kamukha talaga siya nung triangle natin sa baba. Um, 600. Hindi na siya color coordinated. So, gets nyo naman yan guys, ba? So, okay. 30, 30. So, I I'm just doing th this to illustrate it uh, better. No? So, saan na tayo? Um, 600 over sine 30 equals equals anong next? FB. Let's have FB over sine sine ng ano? 120 equals FU over sine 30. So, ayan guys. Now, if we are going to solve, so, F, unahin muna natin si FU. Kasi, FU is just equal to 600. Then, 600 pounds. 600 pounds kasi same sila. Oh. 600 over sine 30. FU over sine 30. So, ibig sabihin si FU, 600. Then, and then, we have FV. So, solving for FV. Uh, 600 over sine 30 times sine 120. Uh, FB is 1039.230 uh, pounds. Okay. Na, ni round off ko na, no? So, 230. So, ngayon, ito na yung sagot. Okay, so ito na yung sagot natin. So, madali lang naman siya, no? There. So, number 2 is done. Alright, so guys, this is the end of the first lecture. Thank you.